My name's Miller Wilson. I love exploring the outdoors and I love sharing what I know about the natural world. But most of all, I love inspiring others to go outside, discover new things and get creative. How beautiful is this? In each episode, I'll take you on a new adventure with problems to solve, science to learn and stuff to make. Coming soon to a store near you. This is my backyard, but everything I do is to inspire your creativity and get you outside. Because we're all made for the wild. Now, how beautiful is this? Today, I'm starting my trek in my hometown, going through the forest and ending up back at home. Now, while I'm in here, I know where the coffee shop is, I know where the school is, and I know where the post office is. So I've got my bearings. But when you go out into the forest, all of that goes out the window. So I'm gonna teach you how to make the forest your friend. Whenever you're exploring the wild, it's really important to know where you are, where you're going, and how to get home. When I go out into the bush, I always bring a compass, but what if I was to lose it? I also always bring my phone, but what if there's no service? The bottom line is you always have to find a way to find your way. I'm not lost and don't plan to be, which is why I practice these techniques every time I'm outdoors. The first thing that I like to remember is the sun always rises in the east and sets in the west. The Earth has four main or cardinal directions, north, east, south and west. You can figure them out by using simple tools. Once you know which way is north, you can easily work out east, south and west. So let's start by making a sundial. So it's the middle of the day at the moment and often when it gets this time, it's a lot harder to get your bearings. So what I'm gonna do is teach you how to make a primitive sundial so you can tell your north, south, east and west. And all we need to collect is a couple of straight sticks. I think this one down here, that one looks really nice. The straighter the better with these sticks. There we go, another one. And finally, a nice big straight one. Yep, there we go, that will be absolutely perfect. Sundials, also known as shadow sticks, have been used throughout history to help navigate and explore the wilderness. Now I'm looking for the perfect spot to build this sundial. A great place to build it is a place that's flat and has no shadows around. If there's trees around this area that cast shadows onto a place, you want to steer clear of that. So an area like this looks pretty good. It's flat, as you can see, no trees around. So we're just going to screw it in at the moment until it holds up straight. Now you want to get this stick as straight as possible. So a great tip is just to look down on it. And yet that looks pretty good. And you might be able to see this down here. This is where the shadow ends. So a lot of the time it's pretty hard to see where the shadow is. So I can see it right there on my hand. So I'll just put it in like that. So now we've got to wait about an hour for the sun to move. But I'm a young fella, so I'm not going to sit around here in the sun waiting. I'm going to go show you some more cool things. Another way to navigate is by using a compass. Here's how you can make one in the wild. Sometimes it's cloudy or you're in a rainforest where there's not enough sun to build a sundial. So I'm gonna teach you how to make a compass out of a needle, a leaf and some still water. So the first step is to grab your needle being very careful and rubbing it on your hair about a hundred times. You can also use fur. The next step is to put your needle on top of your leaf and put it in the stillest water you can find. As static electricity built up, the needle became magnetized. Once the leaf is afloat, the needle will respond to the pull of the Earth's magnetic field, pointing to north and south. This is so cool. So I just pulled out my compass and the leaf is pointing straight to magnetic north. So it's been about an hour since I've made this sundial and we've come back here now. See, this is where the first shadow was and it's moved all the way down here. So I've got another little stick and I'm gonna mark that exact location. And what we need to do now is put a stick in between those two marks, put your left foot on the first one, your right foot on the second one, and in between that should be north and behind us, south. I'm just gonna check on my compass. Yep, mother nature is right again. The path the shadow made over time will show which way the sun is moving. 
By standing with one foot on each point, I can figure out roughly where north is. But another way to tell these directions is by looking to the stars. For thousands of years, people have been using the stars to find their way. In Australia, we have the Southern Cross to find south. In America, you might have the Big Dipper to find north. The Southern Cross points to the south and the Big Dipper points to the north. So as I lay in my shelter tonight, I'm gonna to be looking up at the stars. Head out to your own backyard at night with your family and see if you can spot the Big Dipper or the Southern Cross. Now I've taught you a few ways that you can navigate your way back home, but what should you do if you're completely lost in the wild? If you don't feel comfortable navigating, the best thing you can do is to stay where you are and make it easier for others to find you. So this is something that I always bring in my backpack before going on a trek in the bush. A bright red t-shirt just like this. Now that'll be easier to see from hundreds of meters away out in the wild. So let's find a perfect place to put it. I like this corner because it's easy to see from way up that way. Maybe on a stick like this would be pretty good. Now it doesn't look like anything in this area. There's no reds or oranges or anything that could get mixed up with this. I think I'm going to put it over there like that so that if anyone comes from that end of the creek down there or this one up there, they'll be able to see that I've been in this area. Another way to make a marker is by stacking stones to make a rock totem. You want to make it super obvious that I've been here and this was made by a human. So what I've done is I've grabbed some rocks and I picked this location because it can be seen from all the way down there, all the way up there. And what I'm doing is stacking rocks on top of each other, just like that. So that if anyone's walking past here, they will see that I've been in this location. Remember, once you set up your signals, stay close by. Exploring the outdoors is fun if you're safe and smart about it. I want you to be prepared so that you have the confidence to explore the world around you, with your parents' permission, of course. Finding high ground is very important. It could help you get your bearings, help you see something that you recognize, and most importantly, it could help people see you. Wow, look at this. And don't forget, if you're ever lost out in the bush, remember, you can always use your voice to signal for help. We've learned how to make tools to help us navigate. We also learned how to help others find you when staying put is your best option. These techniques are helpful if you lose your way and can't rely on technology for help. I love these days. Going on adventures and making things in the wild is always so exciting. I love this. <laughs> but as much as I love the outdoors, nothing beats coming home safe and sound to my dad at the end of every day. Exploring is a part of everything you'll do. So where will your adventures take you? <laughs>